He's he's been awake all night playing League of Legends, trying to get into that bronze elo. So we'll give him some <laughs> bloodshot eyes. Hey guys, Ken here with part two of our flash tutorials. Uh, today we're going to be talking everything about colors and how to do basic coloring in Flash. In the last tutorial, I, I talked a little bit about the stroke and the fill, but I wanted to go a little bit more in depth because it's actually pretty important to know the difference between the stroke and the fill. So I wanted to make a little diagram here, so I'll do that right now. Here's the stroke my handwriting is atrocious and there's the fill so I'm going to categorize these two okay so the stroke is basically anything that is an outline or like made up of lines that you can move around so obviously the line tool uh, will fall under the stroke right and then you have the outside of the rectangle tool and then this the actual filling is, is the fill so I'll put it over here the brush tool is a fill is categorized as a fill circle same thing as the the square this outside part is the stroke and this inside part is the fill so you can see already um, since these two boxes are here, everything on the stroke side is black, as stated here. This is the stroke box. And then the green, which is the fills. The pencil tool, um, it works like the brush, but it is considered a stroke. Because these are lines. So you can move these around, but in the actual in the brush tool, it's different because you can't move these around. These, this is like an actual filling. So these are actually different. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure you guys know the difference because it can get a little bit confusing when you're trying to color things and um, you classify something as a stroke when it's really a fill and vice versa, okay? The basic uh, way to just color something in general is if you just select something and then you can just go here in the box and then like just pick any color that you want and then it will change to that color. Um, this is pretty much the same as the paint bucket tool but you're just doing it a different way. So you can just choose the paint bucket and then click that but uh, what I do I just select it and then I change the colors if I need to uh, change something. And um, for the stroke since this, since these are strokes, you're going to have to change the colors on this top box, on the stroke box. See? So, um, just make sure, you know, you get the right classification uh, when you're selecting and filling. Because if, if you, like, select this circle and then you go down to the fill box and it doesn't change colors, is because it's not a fill you need to change this top box because it is a stroke okay alright so uh, just a quick thing um, that you might that you guys ha might have noticed was that uh, this color palette that I have looks a lot different than the uh, the default flash color palette um, I think uh, if you first open flash you'll see something like this it's basically just preference, but if you want to use um, my color palette, you, I actually downloaded it online. Um, I'll provide this link in the description, but this is basically a site that has a bunch of flash extensions and little tools and trinkets that you can download with flash. But one of these is called the NTC Color Safe Palette. So if you download this, um, you can actually put that into flash. So you go to color and then you highlight the color swatches you click this little box and then you go to replace colors and then you pick uh, that file that you downloaded and then that should come up as um, that should come up as this color palette alright so that's just an extra thing that I want to tell you guys you know if you're just curious why this looks different 
Alright guys, let's go over some advanced color picking. So obviously you can choose one of these default colors to color things, but ideally you want to click this top corner button that looks like a rainbow ball. And then this will take you to a more advanced uh, color picker. And here you can basically just choose whatever color that you want. But um, I see a lot of animators when they just start out. They'll pick one of the default colors and like say they're doing like a grassy background. They'll pick this like freaking neon as green grassy hill. And it's just like, oh my god, it hurts your eyes a lot when you're when you're seeing these animations because of these these color choices. And the sky would be like they'll choose a sky color that's like this berry dank blue and if you just look at it 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 looks very primitive and it just doesn't look that good so um, to fix that you just want to take that color and you want to desaturate it to like down here so when you do that you can already see it looks it's like a lot easier on the eyes when you look at it especially for the background and for the sky too you can do the same thing first you want to make it a little bit lighter and then you want to desaturate it too so it's like a general rule of thumb is um, you you want to keep your colors desaturated when you're doing backgrounds or anything else for that matter. The only time you want to use super saturated colors is when you want to do that on purpose and you want to make something look very vibrant and just super glowy and neon. So just keep that in mind when you're uh, coloring your characters or your backgrounds. So uh, let's go into this uh, actual color mixer box now. The main thing that you want to use for this window is right here in the top it says the uh, the type and this is where you would choose uh, your gradients right so let's quickly make a like a square or a rectangle and then let's choose this this is linear this is like the basic gradient right and then this will change the colors to a black white gradient or whatever is default and there's these two two little squares here that shows the actual gradient so if you double click this this will actually take you to the color panel and then you can choose you can choose what gradients that you want to ch that you want to pick right so we'll just make this go like a, a yellow to an orange gradient and then you can also adjust the gradients here. You can just move this around and just play around with it. If you click anywhere um, besides the box, you can add uh, like more colors. So you can just adjust, make this cool rainbow color. So you can add a lot of uh, variation in gradients. Right? And then if you, if you want to remove this, you just click and then drag out or drag down. And then you'll start removing. Uh, gradients. So another way to adjust it is if you go to the paint bucket tool you can uh, and uncheck this, make sure to uncheck this and then you can click drag the gradient to whatever direction that you want it to go to. I use this a lot. Um, it's very flexible when it comes to uh, like how you want gradients to look. And then if you really want to define it, there's an actual tool called the Gradient Transformation Tool. If you click this and the shape, you can you can move the gradient around as a physical shape. So yeah, this is some cool things to know. So uh, let's let's try the radial gradient. So um, you want to make sure to highlight whatever you want to change, and then let's switch this to radial. And then this quickly changes it to a circle gradient. So instead of just like one line, it, it's based on a circle. So you can even uh, you, you can play around this, 
And also an, an important thing is you can adjust the alpha for each gradient. So if you want to make this like see-through in the middle, you click this uh, circle and then you can adjust the alpha. So you can make this like zero. So it's now you can see through it. Okay, so really quick, um, let's go to the color swatches. So it's this little tab here. And um, this thing is really nice if you want to like save colors. So let's say we're, like you choose a color here, right? Let's, let's say you're coloring something and you like this blue color, right? You push OK and it's right here. And you can actually save the swatch just by clicking right here in this empty space. If you click that, then this little box comes up and it saves the color. So now when you go down here, it saves the color for you. So now you can use it whenever you need it. And then say you like this red color just click right here and then you'll save it and uh, it appears right down here too so it's really it's really handy when you're when you're coloring something and you need to remember that certain color for later also if you want to remove the swatch um, you can just click it like highlight it and then uh, right here in the corner you press and then there it should be an option of delete swatch so if you want to delete it there it is, it's gone. Alright guys, so now that we learned all the basics of coloring in Flash, I'll give you a professional um, example of how I color. So I'm just going to make a, a simple character here. Uh, let's give him some of eyes, and nose. Just going to make a simple elephant character here. Give him some big ears. Uh, that looks body, some legs. Uh, nice. Okay, so I've got my elephant here, and um, let's color him. I'm going to choose the color picture and make him. A, a desaturated blue I think would look pretty nice so let's start coloring him here and uh, we'll make his eyes look a little bit of an off gray color uh, let's make let's put some let's put some stuff in here he's he's been awake all night playing League of Legends trying to get into that bronze elo We'll give him some <laughs> bloodshot eyes. Alright, so there you go. We have our basic colored elephant. And um, let's let's do some shading, some simple shading. So uh, if you want to sh shade something, just go to the brush tool. And there's an option here of the brush modes. And if you do the paint selection option, then it paints whatever you have selected. So you can't paint anything right right now, but if you select the colors, I'm just holding control and selecting. And then you can use this as a tool to color. So I'm just going to do some simple shading here. I'm just doing like an outline. There you go. And after that, you can just deselect and then go to the paint bucket tool and then start filling in what the spots that you want shaded. Alright. So there you go. We have our shaded blue elephant. And um, let's make a little background for him. I'm going to pick a desaturated green for a grass. And let's just. Oops, I forgot to put the brush mode back to normal. Alrighty. Uh, there you go. And then uh, let's put a gradient. Oh, let's make a sky. Uh 
I'll make it a desaturated light blue for the sky. There you go. And we'll put a little sun in there too. Alright. And um, let's let's make this a radial gradient and choose a white for the middle and then yellow for the outside. So now this sun has a nice radial glow to it. Right. So um yeah, I guess that's the basics of coloring. Um, if I can do it, I know you guys can, and I know you can't draw it as well as I can, but um, you just have to practice, and um, you'll get better over time with coloring. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, just keep playing around with the colors, the swatches, um, all these gradients uh, you want to just play around with and get used to, and also color picking. Make sure you desaturate your colors, and um, yeah, that's about it. Happy coloring, guys, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. We're going to be talking about the timeline and the library. So we're just going to get into like preparation for actual animation, which is really fun because that's what this whole tutorial is about. Not to color, but to actually animate. So I'll see you guys in part three.